Welcome to Tesla Bytes, where we serve you GIS in small bytes. Today we'll be covering ArcGIS Row, create and iterate rows model tool and model builder. Let's get started. I have some US population data, and it's a service from Esri. You can see that they provide a lot of different information, but it's all in one feature class. You may find that there are instances where you may want to split data by a group, and in this case, I'd like to split out each of these by state. So I want every county for Alaska in its own feature class inside of a geodatabase. How I plan to go about this is using the iterate rows within Model Builder. Using the Analysis tab, I've created a new model and I've brought in the layer from the feature service. We'll need the Model Builder ribbon to get to our iterators. And from there, we're going to select Iterate Row Selection. I've connected my input, and now let's zoom in and set up our iterate row selection. Since I'll be grouping by state, I'm going to select that field, skip null values, and then click OK. Since I know that these are going to be grouped values, I'm going to go ahead and rename this to group. This will make it easier when I go to set it up as a parameter. In fact, let's go ahead and do that now. Right-click, Parameter. We also know that if we use this tool again, we may use a different feature class. So let's go ahead and set this up as a parameter and rename it. So what are our next steps? Well, we know we'd like to copy these features and we'd like to export them into a geodatabase. So we'll need to set a workspace variable as well as a copy features tool. So I'm going to go ahead and do that now. By clicking on variable, navigating to workspace, clicking OK, and then double click to open so that we can give it a location for our workspace. I'll also rename this, since I know it's going to be a file geodatabase, and I'm also going to set it as a parameter. Doing these steps early on will make saving it as a tool much easier. Next, we'll navigate to Tools and select Copy Features. We'll connect Group to the input and double-click. From here, we'd like our feature class to have a name that's related to the group data, and in our case, it's going to be states. So I'm going to set a variable based on my model input. I also know that I'd like my output to go to a particular database that I've set. So I'm going to put that variable in as well. There's just one more consideration that we have to make. Remember that there are some states that will have a space in their name, and we'd like to have a feature class named by state. So we'll need to add in a calculate value so that we can remove special characters. To calculate value, I need to navigate to utilities and select calculate value. Double clicking, we can set our expression. And since it's going to be a string value, we'll enclose this in quotations. Having swapped the names so we don't need to change our inline variable in the copy features, I'm going to go ahead and drag group and set it as a precondition. Now let's go ahead and give it a test. We'll validate and run. That worked beautifully. We have all 50 states as separate feature classes and those with a space have an underscore in between. I've brought in Colorado, and you can see all the counties are there inside that feature class, as well as all of the attributes. So let's return back to the model. Since we've tested and proved our model, we now want to make it more useful as a universal tool for a feature class. So what we'll want to do is move this copy features into an in-memory instead of a file geodatabase, and then we'll want to add a collect values and set that as a parameter. To add collect values, we'll go over to utilities and select collect values. We'll be using collect value because we're going to set our workspace to export to in memory. This way it doesn't have to be pointed to a file geodatabase, but rather it gets collected and set as a parameter so we can use this as a tool in other models. From there, I'll connect my output to the collect values and then set the output values as a parameter and save. Lastly, we'll head over to Properties, where we give our model a name that makes sense for searching later, and we order our parameters in a logical fashion. The input should be at the top, so I'll go ahead and drag that. When you're done, click OK, and don't forget to save. So let's recap. We created a model and set up a workflow, along with parameters and variables. We then tested and then adjusted for our purposes, and then set our properties and name. When you're done, you may have something that looks similar to this that you can easily search with your geoprocessing pane and then click to run. You can also drag it into a model as a submodel. I think this is a great stopping point.
This has been Tesla Bytes, where we serve you GIS in small bites. Thank you for watching, and please be sure to visit us at www.tesselations.us. Also, subscribe and ring that bell.